You're all so cynical. I'm so proud. Hello, welcome back to another video. Some ordinary guitarist here today, and today we are going to talk about three things sponsorships, cables, and controversy. Ooh. Now, just so everyone's on the same page, I want to quickly go over the four ish different types of sponsored video there are in the guitar gear video world. The first is product is provided and you get to keep the product as payment. So after the video is done, you get to keep whatever gear you were doing a video about. The second type is the product is provided and you get to keep that product and you get paid an agreed amount sum of money for doing the video as well. The third type is the product is provided on loan, you have to send it back but you get paid a sum of money for doing the video. And the fourth type, I wouldn't really put it in the same category as the others but it's kind of it's kind of technically sponsored but not really. It's where the product is provided and you send it back because it's provided on loan and you don't get paid anything, you don't gain anything, you don't get to keep anything. It's just you got to do a video out of it. It's not really in the same realm as the others but it's still worth noting. Now externally from the gear world there are sponsored segments of videos and you've seen them before. They're about a minute long of an ad read uh, somewhere in the video and it'll be this video is sponsored by Audible or something like that and there'll be an ad read and then it'll go back to the video and the sponsor doesn't necessarily have to have much to do with the topic of the video. And just for the sake of transparency while we're here I have never received any money for doing sponsored videos I've only ever received the gear the product that I'm talking about and I get to keep that and use that. We're at a point with the channel where it's big enough to where I could, if I wanted to, have just about every video sponsored by someone, but I turn a lot of them down because they don't always fit my criteria. Um, I have two main ones. The first is pretty standard in the overall industry, or at least I think it's pretty standard. It's the idea that the product has to be good. If it's not good, I'm not interested. Most companies make good stuff, some don't though. The other criteria is it has to be interesting. If it's not interesting, I'm not going to be interested in doing a video, and especially a full-length video. I'm the one person who has to spend the most time on a video than anyone else. I have to script it, record it, and edit it. And if it's not interesting, then I'm not going to want to make the video, so I don't. It doesn't have to be mind-blowing to interest me, though. Remember, I am the guy who has a guitar pick collection because I think guitar picks are cool. <laughs> I'm gonna put these away now because I don't want to steal your girl. Now the reason I bring all this up is because in my most recent video there was a sponsored segment in it which seemed to cause a bit of a stir. There were quite a few questions so uh, I'm gonna try and answer them today. And to be clear I received the cables that we're gonna be talking about today for free uh, but it wasn't for the purpose of this video but I did receive them for free. The sponsor was from Monster Cable. I was approached by their distributor, who are some really cool guys, and uh, they asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at some of the cables. Now, I didn't know too much about Monster. I knew that Zach Wilde used them, and I knew that they were in the premium cable space. Other than that, I really didn't know too much about them. The only other premium cable brand that I'd be familiar with would be Mogami, so I did a quick price comparison between Mogami's top of the line cable and Monster's top of the line cable, which were roughly the same length, I think the Monster's a little bit longer, but there was a considerable price difference favouring Monster, so I was interested. I was given the choice of some cables and I selected a few that I was interested in trying out and uh, they, they do seem like good quality cables. Monster have some claims that I was interested in checking out and I did, um, so I'm going to do that again for this video. The idea was that different instruments could have different cables and this is a line of logic that I thought made sense but a lot of people seem to disagree. I think the best way to think of a cable is like a fixed tone control. Every cable is going to change the sound of your instrument, and when you're sending a signal from point A to point B, by the time it reaches point B, it's been changed by the cable. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's not, but there is a change. So why not have different cables that have different effects on the sound, and interchange them depending on the desired effect that we want? We do it with almost every other piece of gear, so why not cables? Kind of, it makes sense to me. But this is the first time I've heard of this idea too. I understand the skepticism. So let's take a closer look at the cables. All right, so let's take a surface level look at these cables first. The gold is the guitar cable and the black is the bass cable. 
It's immediately noticeable when just looking at the cable itself that the bass cable is thicker than the guitar cable. You can feel it and you can also see it. This might mean that there's more copper in the bass cable or it might just mean more shielding. We'll have to take a closer look. But if we hold them the same distance apart and let them go, the guitar cable is a lot more flexible and the bass cable is a lot more rigid. Now we're going to take a closer look inside. Alright, so we've got guitar cable on the left and bass cable on the right and you can immediately tell that the inner core of the cable is thicker on the bass cable than it is on the guitar. So these are different cables, they're not just saying that. So the guitar cable and the bass cable are different cables from each other but do they sound different? So to test this, I did an experiment. I plugged a guitar and a bass into an interface, directly into the computer, into GarageBand, into some amp sims. I then played riffs twice, and the only thing that I changed were the cables. So let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> I don't know what you're listening on. You could be listening on your phone speakers, you could be listening on pro audio monitors. I have no idea. I do know that either way, your listening experience is going to be affected by YouTube's compression, which in my opinion and experience kind of nullifies any sound test ever. And it's quite annoying actually. But, but I do know what I'm listening on. I'm listening through a nice pair of Sennheisers and I'm listening direct from the recording, and I can certainly say that there is a difference. It's maybe a little bit more pronounced on the bass, but that might just be because the bass is a clean tone and the guitar is a distorted tone, but there is a difference on both. But it sounds kind of like I messed with the tone pot, and I didn't. So that confirms it to me that the cables, just different cables, sound different. And then I thought, well, maybe I'm just listening too hard. I'm, I'm looking for a difference. So turned it off, got fresh ears the next day, listened again, still a difference. I even got another person to listen, asked them if they heard any difference, and they did. So I'm not going crazy, there is a difference. So yeah, different cables for different applications is something that I can get behind. Now, controversy. This is something I wasn't aware of when I did the first video, but uh, since then I've been looking into it. Monster are a company that has seemingly had quite a few controversies in its time. This comes from their aggressive trademark disputes, which many of which, at least, were very stupid. Now trademarks, at least in the US, have to be defended to keep them, and it's a difficult balancing act for public opinion. For example, Gibson, maybe two years ago, got into some trouble when they sued Dean for alleged trademark infringement. Dean had been making guitars that were allegedly infringing on Gibson's trademarks for over 40 years, and Gibson didn't have a problem with it until recently. That's primarily where most people had an issue, because if you don't defend it, you don't get to keep it. So it's all about a balance, a good defense, a good offense. Monster were very offensive. Let's look at some examples. In 2001, Monster Cable sued Disney Pixar for their movie Monsters, Inc. Now that sounds ridiculous, but there are certain scenarios where that could be understandable. For example, Monster make headphones, have done for a long time. If Disney was making Monsters Inc. branded headphones, there is the case to be made that this could cause confusion, and if you don't defend a trademark you lose it, so it's understandable and acceptable that they could sue for that. They didn't though. From the limited information I've been able to find out online, Monster sued Disney for the title Monsters Inc and referencing the word monster and they tried to stop them from releasing toys, video games and TV series and even sequel movies. What? Now I actually haven't been able to find out what happened. No one has covered anything since and I would assume because of the absence of any coverage that there was an external outside of court settlement and this is probably backed up by the fact that there are Monsters Inc headphones. But they didn't stop at just suing Disney. 
Monster have quite a number of lawsuits under their belt. They sued Monster Energy, they sued a mechanic with the name Monster, they sued Monster Golf, a mini golf place, ended up having to pay $200,000 to them, and rightfully so. Now, I and many others don't like that they did this. There is, however, a somewhat positive side to this. Not only did they publicly acknowledge that they really shouldn't be as aggressive with trademark suits as they were, but they kind of kept to that and haven't been involved in any that I can find for years. There's a reason that I never heard of any of this. The last case that I'm aware of happened when I was nine, and I wasn't really brushing up on my trademark disputes in between episodes of Ed, Ed and Eddie. So in conclusion, they did some things I most certainly don't agree with, but they do seem to have changed. It's still, of course, worth noting though. So, that's the video. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.